Believe it or not, the Pittsburgh Steelers locker room fight between Mitch Trubisky and Deontay Johnson is something that you could take away as a positive. There are a lot of moving pieces in this, and I think it's time we break all of them down. What's up, Steelers Nation? Thank you so much for jumping on to Steelers To Go, your daily to-go cup of Pittsburgh Steelers news and analysis. I'm Noah Strackbein. Find us on youtube.com slash all Steelers talk or anywhere you get your podcasts. And today we're going to go inside the Deontay Johnson, Mitch Trubisky fight that happened at halftime of the Jets game. First off, I am sick and tired of talking about something that happened three weeks ago. At this point, the NFL season is so far forward that there's no reason to think about something that happened at halftime of week five. There's just not or week four. There's just not. But there are some moving parts that you could take away from this. Some moving parts that you could look at and say these turned into positives. For starters, let's talk about Mike Tomlin's response. Obviously, it was a, it didn't happen. Maybe it did happen. If it didn't happen, it should have happened. I took that as the locker room needed to be passionate, and nobody was passionate up until that moment. Everybody was kind of content with losing. After that, nobody was content with losing. From there, you saw Najee Harris sitting in the locker room 45 minutes to an hour after the game in Buffalo. You heard Arthur Millette go off to players in an impassioned speech. And then there was a change at quarterback, obviously. Things have changed since that moment. And I'm not saying that Mitch Trubisky was the cause of all that. I'm just saying that I think the players were comfortable with losing because they understood that the progression needed to happen. I don't think they're comfortable with losing anymore. That's how I took that. What it did is it changed the entire locker room to, yeah, we need a spark, but that spark needs to be consistent. That's what I took that as. Mike Tomlin probably wasn't lying. He definitely wasn't lying when he said that Kenny Pickett needed to bring a spark. That's why they made the change at halftime. I think he was looking for a spark, but I think he was looking for a spark, not because he wanted to win that football game, He obviously wanted to win that football game, but because he knew that the spark was there, he knew that players were now passionate about winning and that they weren't going to lay over or lay down and get run over by the Jets or any other team comfortably. They were going to take it with a grain of salt. They were going to take it with a punch in the gut. They're going to play with the chip on their shoulder and they're going to move forward. Obviously, Buffalo happened. Not great. But you look past that and you look at everything that happened before and after Buffalo. Buffalo was a mistake. But even then, you could take away some really good, positive things from that game. The fact that Arthur Millette kind of gave that impassioned speech said a lot about the locker room and how everybody was kind of fed up with losing like that. You, you could take away a lot from Najee Harris hanging out and being real pissed off and down after that game because you looked at it and said this is now a team that wants to win they are not comfortable with losing they don't want to lose Mike Tomlin wanted to get that team out of his roster he understood that a change at quarterback was how that needed to happen but he also understood that that moment at halftime when things happened is when that spark would ignite so he made the change Then there's the other side of this, and that's Deontay Johnson. And personally, I would say that the way that Deontay Johnson handled the situation and addressed the media and was just very straightforward about everything and said, hey, you know, it did happen, but we're on good terms. This is football. People are passionate and we're competitors. And in the heat of moment, you know, battle gets between people. It is what it is, but we're cool. I would do anything for that guy, and I know he'd do anything for me. I took that as two things. One. There was questions about whether or not Deontay Johnson had the authority to yell at Mitch Trubisky. And honestly, you know, he did drop that pass. It was for an interception that doesn't look good. But he does have the authority to yell at Mitch Trubisky. Deontay Johnson, whether you like it or not, is definitely a leader for this football team. He's been here for four years. He has established himself as the true wide receiver one in Pittsburgh. He has become a vocal point to guys and a work ethic to guys he's always one of the last people in the locker room off the practice field he's always one of the first people on the field on on game day on practice days 
he is a leader by all counts. He is a leader. And I think the way that he took on that situation and said, Hey, we're cool. But yes, it did happen was a leadership quality that the Pittsburgh Steelers needed. Overall, it's something that we need to put to bed, but it's something that you should be able to take away positive things from. You should be able to take away the fact that a change did happen. And I think we all needed a change to happen. Kenny Pickett, the offense, Mike Tomlin, everybody included. And at the same time, I think that you have to look at Deontay Johnson in this situation and say, he, he did well. He did much better than I expected him to do. He didn't blame anybody. He took that with a grain and just said, hey, yep, it did happen. Yep, I did make a mistake. It was the heat of the moment. It is what it is. We're cool. Everybody's fine. Let's move on. And afterwards, I went up and talked to him and said, hey, man, look, it. I don't want to talk about this as much as everybody else doesn't want to talk about this. I apologize. And he was like, nah, yeah, I get it. You're just doing your job. And I think that is such an important part of being a leader is understanding that these things do get out and that if you don't address them, they're just going to fester and that they're just going to get bigger and more obscene. So many different storylines are going to come out of all of this nonsense. And they already are coming out of all of this nonsense. But if you could address it head on, you could kind of put it to rest. And I think he understands that, which is a huge part of leadership. Huge part of leadership. Think about it. Think about the past. I mean, there were a lot of people in this fan base that were upset with Juju Smith-Schuster and his TikTok dances. But Juju Smith-Schuster just constantly blamed it on everybody else. And I'm not saying Juju wasn't a leader. I think Juju was a leader. But in that moment, he just wanted to blame the media for blowing up his TikToks instead of acknowledging that his TikToks were being blown up by people on ESPN, former players, players that they were playing on given weeks, and that the media just had to ask him about it because that's their job. If he took that and said, hey, you know, this is my time to correct these things and kind of take advantage of the situation because I have the spotlight on me. I think it would have turned out way better. Deontay Johnson knew that if he just addressed this and said, hey, yeah, this is what happened, but we're all good. I'm not going to get too deep into everything, but I will say that it did happen. We're all good. I'd do anything for him. He understands that that means from this point forward, it's all over. It's real quiet. I think that's a huge step forward for Deontay Johnson. Now, What does it mean for the Pittsburgh Steelers moving forward? I think it means a couple of things. I mean, for one, even if Kenny Pickett isn't playing great, you stick with Kenny Pickett because you're not going to, you're going to lose your cool on a rookie, obviously, but you're going to do it in a much different manner. You're going to do it a much more professional manner. You're going to be way more calm about the situation. You're not going to lose your cool and freak out on a rookie especially a rookie three or four games into his career and say, Hey dude, you suck. Nope. On the other side of that, the team can't understand that both of their quarterbacks aren't going to win games. And you know, if we're being realistic, Kenny does add a spark to the Steelers, but Kenny isn't playing perfect. And I don't expect Kenny to play perfect. And I don't expect Kenny to win a super bowl for the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2022. And I don't truthfully expect Kenny Pickett to lead the Steelers to the playoffs. I just don't. But I do expect him to try his best and to develop and to take steps forward. And I think that at this point, everybody in that locker room needs to understand that, yeah, that's what you asked for. This is where we are. We got to a point where Kenny is our guy. We have to develop with Kenny Pickett. That's okay. And I think everybody there is looking at it the same way and just saying, Kenny is our guy. We have to develop with Kenny. We'll be okay. Even if we're not okay right now, we will be okay. And I think that is huge for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Overall, this entire situation is complete nonsense and happens almost all the time. And now there are reports coming out that it wasn't the reason Mitch Trubisky got benched and Like I said, I think the reason wasn't because Deontay freaked out. I think it was because Mike Tomlin saw in that moment that he has an opportunity to really make some change, add that spark. I don't think he was lying about the spark. 
I think he saw an opportunity to add that spark, took advantage of it, and made the change at quarterback. Everything that followed from that shouldn't matter. But the fact that Deontay stepped up and said, yep, this is cool, it is what it is, shows he's a leader. The fact that Kenny Pickett's in there right now shows that the Pittsburgh Steelers are headed towards the direction of success. It doesn't mean that they're going to succeed this season, but it means that they're headed in the direction of success. I think that was the biggest thing that they needed to change. I think that was where that pent up frustration came from was the fact that nobody wants a bridge quarterback. Nobody wants to understand like, okay, we're going to stink this year too. And our quarterback isn't going to be the guy that's going to be with us next year. Why? It just doesn't make sense. If you're going to struggle, struggle with the team that you're going to walk into 2023 with and try to win a Super Bowl. If you could do that, you have a much better chance of succeeding in 2023. I think Deontay saw that. I think Mike Tomlin saw that in the moment. And I think that's where the Pittsburgh Steelers are headed. Nobody wants a locker room fight. Nobody wants to see anybody blown up. And obviously nobody wants to talk about something that happened three weeks ago. But we are, and it did. And the Pittsburgh Steelers are now pointed in a much better direction than they were at halftime of the Jets game.